Hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I am Courtney Eck. And I'm Sadie Eck. And Sadie just said to me, you're going to hate this story. So that means cold case, cold case. That means a cold case. What else does it mean? Um, unsolved. Cold Wrongful case. conviction. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Uh, this was a listener suggestion. I just looked back and I don't, I didn't say who, I didn't write down who suggested it. Off so, to a good start, but thank I you. Know. Thank, thank you, you guys. Mm-hmm. People sometimes say like, I don't know if you take suggestions. Yes, we do. Heck we won't yeah. always be able to cover them um, for one reason or another, but we love for people to help us find cases to cover. That's really helpful. Absolutely. As, especially out of the United States. Yes. Yes. Uh, This is the murder of Mary Ann Flynn and the wrongful conviction of Anthony Aponovich. Mm. On August 23rd, 1984, 33-year-old Mary Ann Flynn headed home after spending the evening visiting her family. Mary Ann lived in a duplex she owned in a neighborhood of Cleveland, Ohio, and she rented the other half to tenants. Right around 10 p.m. that night, one of Mary Ann's neighbors saw her arrive home get out of her car and go inside. Around the same time, her tenants said they heard a door slam. And then at 1130 p.m., they heard, quote, a loud bang or thud, followed by a high-pitched noise at Mm. midnight. Mm -hmm. After that, Mary Ann's half of the duplex went silent. The next day, Mary Ann's friend and co-worker, Christine, grew concerned when she failed to report to work. Mary Ann was a nurse midwife and was very committed to her job and the families she worked with. It was unheard of for her to be a no-show for her shift. Oh, yeah. No way. Yeah. Worried, Christine called Mary Ann's brother, Martin, and asked if he could go with her to check on Mary Ann. When they arrived at her home, they found it to be locked up tight from the outside, but were able to gain entry to her half of the duplex through her tenant's basement, which they shared. When they made their way through the home and up to the second story bedroom, they found Mary Ann lying face down on her bed with her hands bound behind her back. Mm. Around her neck was a bed sheet that had been rolled up. It was also tied to the headboard of the bed. Wow. She was covered in blood and not breathing. So Martin called for help. Mm. When authorities arrived, they pronounced Mary Ann dead at the scene An autopsy would later find that she had been raped, beaten, stabbed, and then strangled to death. Mm. One of the detectives who investigated the scene said, quote, You should have seen the violence that occurred in that room. It was almost palpable. Mm. We know she put up a hell of a struggle. The killer was really outraged and angry. Good grief. Medical examiners were able to retrieve male DNA from inside Marianne's body and the time of death was estimated to be sometime between midnight and 6 a.m. on August 24th. What year are we again? 1984. Uh Uh-huh. Marianne was described as having a wonderful mix of both worldliness and naivety. She was known to prepare meals for the poor and would take in single mothers who needed help. Mm. She had taught herself to ski in the Alps while working as an OB nurse for the Army in Germany. Wow. Wow. When she returned to the States, she took a nursing job in Michigan, but soon grew frustrated with the limitations of her profession. Mm -hmm. You can relate to that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, nurses, OB, I mean, all nurses, but Mm -hmm. labor and delivery nurses work so hard. Yeah. Oh my God. They work so hard. And at night. (laughs) And all, yeah, at night and they have to be told what to do and, uh, and, 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 yeah. Yeah. If you're getting ready to have a baby in the hospital, get a good nurse yeah. is number one. And then buy them pri- presents, treats. Mm-hmm. Bring them cookies. And... Massage gift certificates. Yes. I don't think they can take those things, but just sneak, sneak them to them. Yes, they probably can. I wouldn't mm-hmm. do that. Uh, so she, because she was frustrated with being a nurse, she moved to Scotland to get certified as a midwife. Wow. <laughs> yeah. She would be my best friend. Good for her. Yeah. She moved back to Cleveland in 1979 and started working as a nurse midwife in a poor area of the city. Her family was, yeah, 
Her family was nervous when she decided to move into the same area where she worked because it was known for its bars and petty crimes. But Mary Ann reassured them, saying she loved her home and her neighborhood. Mm -hmm. She had never been happier. One article told the story of a single 19-year-old woman who was seven months pregnant and needed help. She had heard about the midwife in the neighborhood and decided to go knock on her door. Mary Ann answered and brought her inside right away. After doing an examination on her, Mary Ann suspected the mom to be was suffering from preeclampsia, which can be deadly if left untreated, mm -hmm. and brought her to the hospital. The woman remembered, quote, the doctor told me your blood pressure is over 230. Your neighbor just saved your life. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is so lucky. Mm -hmm. At the time of her murder, Mary Ann was in the process of adopting a baby from India and was renovating her home to get it ready. <laughs> God, girl. Oh, no. Take a moment. Watch no. some television. <laughs> no, she's too busy being a saint. Perfect. Holy yeah. crap. Because of this, she had many skilled workers coming in and out to help her with the big job. Mm -hmm. As investigators searched the crime scene, they found evidence of the work being done and also found a contract on her kitchen table for a house painter whom she had just hired. Oh, boy. When detectives interviewed friends and family, they were told that Mary Ann had mentioned some of the workers had been making passes at her, and one of her house painters had been, quote, making her feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. This all happened just days before she was murdered. The friends and family couldn't identify the painter, but said he was a, quote, big man whose wife was pregnant. With this information, detectives zeroed in on the house painter, 29-year-old Anthony Aponovich, whose contract had been left out on Mary Ann's table. Here we go. When they questioned Anthony, he said he had been hired to paint the outside of Mary Ann's house. He was familiar with her property, but hadn't been working for her for very long before she was killed. He insisted he hadn't had anything to do with Mary Ann's murder and said he had been out drinking the night she was killed. Investigators were able to find a few witnesses to back up parts of his alibi, but not for the entire night. Mm -hmm. During questioning, police noticed Anthony had a scratch on his face that looked like it might have come from a fight. Anthony said he accidentally broke a beer bottle and the glass from the bottle had scratched his face. But when, but when this didn't seem believable to police, he changed his story and said he'd been in a fight at one of the bars. Oof, yeah, both of those things just anything else come up with any other excuse mm -hmm. neither of those things seem plausible right police were unable to cooperate the story but they were also unable to find anything under mary ann's fingernails to suggest that she had scratched her killer mm -hmm. so it was a dead end mm -hmm. one of anthony's co-workers came forward and said anthony had told him he wanted to have sex with mary ann but anthony denied ever saying anything like that Mm -hmm. Other co-workers backed up Anthony and said that he, they had only heard Anthony say that she was a nice lady. Uh -huh. Four days after the murder, police decided to arrest Anthony. Oh my god. <sighs> Why? Don't know. Just for fun. They asked him to take a lie detector test, but he refused. But he did let them search his home and willingly gave them a sample of hair, blood, and saliva. Oh, boy. He even allowed a doctor to examine his penis for any signs of forcible sex, and there were none. What? I have never in my life, I've, I've never heard that. Having an examination? Of a penis? Right. Is that a thing? It I mean, it be. should be. It yeah. should be, but I've never heard of it. It probably, it probably people don't let that happen. Yeah. willingly and yeah. to get a warrant to search your penis probably <laughs> you know yes i don't know god we either do far too little or way too much mm -hmm. wow yeah during this time anthony waived his right to an attorney mm -mm, no <laughs> yep and after being held for three days he was released because DNA testing was still in its infancy in 1984, investigators had the samples taken from Mary Ann's body, tested for blood type, and found they, mat and found they were a match to Anthony. Oh, sure. Apparently, this was enough for prosecutors, mm -mm. who then took this little tiny bits of evidence and brought it to a grand jury. Mm, of course they did. 
So basically the guy was in her, not even in her house necessarily, but worked there. He knew her and had the same blood type and had a scratch <laughs> on his face. Right? I'm, like, am I missing yeah. something? Right? I would like to know if I'm missing something. Yeah. Just <sighs> six weeks after Mary Ann was murdered, Anthony was indicted on two counts of right rape, one count of first degree murder, and one count of aggravated burglary. You have got to be kidding me. I am not kidding. He was then arrested and formally charged. Anthony would later tell reporters that a detective called him to tell him he was being arrested for murder. And when Anthony asked the detective why him, he responded, quote, All I can tell you is this is a high profile case and they have to get somebody. And you look worse than anyone else because all of your alibi witnesses are drunks. My mouth is on the floor. Yes. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Also, like, calling him to give him a heads up. Like, where are we again? Where are we? Cleveland. Ohio. Oy, oy, oy. Yeah. Yeah, man. I don't, I mean, like, hey, hey, buddy. So, uh, heading over there to arrest you. Yeah, quick heads up. For murder. It's going down. It's going to go down like this. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Just wow. (laughs) If it's true, like... And if he had done it, guess what? He's out of he's out of there. Mm-hmm. He's gonna yes. escape. Yes, one hundred. If he hadn't done it, it's just freaking weird. It's so, weird, no matter what. Yeah. Anthony maintained his innocence and pleaded not guilty to all charges. Okay. With only two months to prepare for trial, Anthony's defense worked as hard as they could to gather evidence and firm up his alibi. Two months. Two <laughs> months. What, Courtney? God. Yes. This is bad. This it's, is bad. I, 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 I'm just going to, I think I got everything sorted out, but it took me a very long time to figure out the details because yeah. they sounded so crazy. I bet. I and I was bet. like, this isn't, I've got my years wrong or something. Right. Right. Like there's like, certainly there has been more time, but no. Right. No, it was, it was November of 1987. Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. Two months later. Mm-hmm. Unreal. At the, yeah. At the time of Mary Ann's murder, Anthony was known as a drinker and a fighter. Mm-hmm. He had a pregnant wife at home, but was known to sleep around. Mm-hmm. Just a few days before Mary Ann was killed, police impounded Anthony's car because he had been drinking and driving. Mm-hmm. Anthony told his lawyers that he had started drinking at 9 a.m. the day of the murder and drank through work until he was able to get to the bars where he could continue drinking. Sure. His defense team had their work cut out for themselves. Yep. When the trial began in December of 1984, prosecutors alluded to the fact that Anthony had served time in prison. They weren't allowed to give the details then during the trial, but in 1976, Anthony was found guilty of rape. That conviction was ultimately overturned on appeal, and he pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of sexual battery. Mm. Prosecutors relied heavily on the blood type evidence and told the jury that fluid found in Mary Ann's body was from an, quote, A-type secretor. So, like, we all know from forensic Mm -hmm. files, right? Mm -hmm. So this means that someone who secretes their blood type antigens into other other bodily fluids like saliva and mucus. So some people do this and some people don't. But I've even, I think I've read recently that that's all kind of bogus. I have too. Right? Yeah. I don't remember the the specifics of why it's bogus, but I've definitely read that too. Right. Uh, But back in 1984, this was like the gold standard of blood typing. Oh, yeah. Right? Slam dunk. Yes. Yes. And that, because Anthony was also an A-type secretor, he was likely the perpetrator. Mm Mm-hmm. One of the detectives testified that, and I think that now that I'm remembering, I think part of the bogusness is that they thought it was a much more rare than it is. I was just thinking that. They used to be like one in 125 mm-hmm. billion people. Or whatever. Right. But yeah. now they find that like everybody's Everybody does it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Just differently or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody tell us. Somebody out there knows. Tell Somebody us. knows. Somebody screaming at us like they mm-hmm. always are. Mm-hmm. Poor, poor listeners. Poor listeners. We try our hardest. <laughs> <laughs> but not hard enough, apparently. Nope. 
One of the detectives testified that during one of his interrogations, Anthony asked for the opportunity to call his mother, quote, when he was indicted. Hmm. The detective said this comment stunned him, and he believed Anthony was admitting guilt by saying this. Oh, not that he's being railroaded into a <laughs> right? secondary murder charge. Right. Two counts of, of rape. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd be pretty sure that this was going down and I had nothing. There's nothing I could do to stop it, too, if I were him. Right. The prosecution relied heavily on this testimony during the trial and told the jury it was, quote, extremely important and it is an, an effective admission of guilt. So they really like pushed home on this point of when not if oh yeah imagine imagine just i'm just thinking back to that time and how many people how many people got away with crimes because Mm -hmm. there was no dna and surveillance everywhere but also how many people got wrongfully convicted because people didn't know they didn't have information they just would trust that the police Mm -hmm. and these scientists and stuff Mm -hmm. were telling the truth yep god the defense told Dizzying. the jury, I know, and I, uh, some of the things I read talked about how Anthony just was sort of like a, um, well, now I don't know the words to describe, but like hard to control, had mm-hmm. a big mouth on him. Yeah, he sounds like, um, a, like a wild dude for yeah, sure. Definitely yeah, definitely wild to Make bad poor choices. Yeah. 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 Uh, so the, the jury walked in and was sort of like, okay, this guy... Yeah, 100% did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The defense told the jury their client was innocent and there was no real physical evidence to tie Anthony to the crime. Mm -hmm. They showed how Mary Ann's hands had been bagged to protect potential evidence and that a hair had been found inside the bag during her autopsy. Mm -hmm. After forensic testing, this hair was ruled out as belonging to Anthony. Mm Hmm. Prosecutors said that the hair may have belonged to one of the crime scene techs and was irrelevant to the case. Oh, yeah. Throw it out. Don't mm-hmm. even worry about that yes. detail. <laughs> right. Ew. Yeah, gross. Boring. Yep. Later, even one of Mary Ann's boyfriends who was questioned, the police like, apparently allegedly asked him if he had recently dyed his hair mm-hmm. because his hair color didn't match the hair they found. And so they were, like, trying to figure out how to make it fit. God, you guys. I know. Just do your job slowly Mm -hmm. and methodically, and eventually Mm -hmm. you'll get there, or you won't. But in the meantime, you won't just come up with wild, like, bridges from suspects to conviction. Right. God. What else do you have to do? You got somewhere to be? (laughs) Right. You know what I I mean? Seriously, no. Especially in this case. I've never heard of a case moving so fast. (sighs) No, never, never, Mm -hmm. ever, ever, Mm -hmm. ever. I'm always shocked at how long it takes. Yes. The defense also pointed out that if Anthony had been drinking all day, starting at 9 a.m., it would have been very difficult, if not impossible, to pull off this brutal rape and murder without leaving any evidence behind. Oh, good point. Excellent point. Anthony did not take the stand in his own defense, and the trial only lasted a few weeks. After deliberations, the jury found Anthony guilty on all counts. Of course they did. It would be hard for him to get his shoes off without leaving a crime scene, let alone... Yes. Yeah, they didn't find any fingerprints, no footprints, no nothing. Like, they would have... Yeah, he would have left a trail of chips and cream cheese or whatever weird yes, shit yes. people eat when they're drunk. You know? Yeah, he would have like left lamp, his wallet behind. Lamp shades and yes. Taco Bell receipt. Exactly yes. right. Fourth meal mm-hmm. everywhere. Mm-hmm. After finding him guilty, they then sentenced him to death. Oh no. Yes. Oh no. <sighs> All of this happened in just over a hundred days. Since Mary Ann was murdered. Vomit chills. Just oh over my three God. months. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? You're just cruising along in life, being kind of a rowdy bad dude, get sleeping around, mm-hmm. pregnant, girlfriend, wife, mm-hmm. whatever, and the next thing you know, convicted death to sentenced to death. Yep, twenty nine years old. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. That is staggering. Mm-hmm. That should, I mean, <laughs> if you're going to sentence someone to death, you need to give them at least two years to sort of come to terms with what's happening to them. 
Well, and I don't, I don't know about his defense lawyer. Like, I don't know how they railroaded it in so fast. Like, everything I've ever known about the court system is that there are delays and delays and delays and delays, and it takes forever to do everything all the time. Totally. Like, did they just not ask for time to? I don't know. Maybe he had like a new public defender or something. Who knows? I don't know. You know, and I've been like, this is a terrible comparison, but I work in real estate as one of my five jobs. And if you want to get the deal done, you give your sellers less time to respond, you know, Mm -hmm. because you just want to like push them into. So it's exactly the same thing. They were like, yeah, we can't, we just got to do this. Don't give anybody any time to think about it. Don't give the, obviously, clearly don't give the defense time to plan. Mm -mm. And Apparently they weren't interested in planning either. So yeah, yeah. I read varying... one that they said that the defense, one of the defense lawyers, said that they worked in those like two months they had to prepare. They worked seven days a week constantly. It's all they did, Ugh. and it just wasn't enough time. No. But like, ask for more time. How is that not pot? Like, you need they time to look at the evidence. Yeah, <laughs> to build a case. Yes. Yeah. In a death state, <laughs> no. a death penalty state. No. Wow. I mean, at a minimum, he could get this case thrown out for, like, poor, um, what's it called? Defense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, Representation. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. So years and then decades would pass as Anthony mm. worked his way through the appeals process, and it became very clear that investigators basically did a terrible job. Right. How would that take decades? It took me, what have we been here, 20 minutes? Yeah, it took me mm-hmm. 20 minutes to p- put that one together. I wonder how, I wonder what the average length of a, of a wrong con- full conviction over being overturned is. Like, what's the median length? My guess is like 17 years. Mm-hmm. To My get guess, it overturned? To get out, yeah. To get it overturned. I would say like 30. I think it takes mm-hmm. a fucking long time. Yeah. If I'm at talking all. A- we're going average here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, because most people probably don't ever get let out. <laughs> yeah. But of those who do, Either, so we're, not okay. including, um, we're not including the people that are still there. Because yeah. then the average is 107. Right. Um, my guess is 17. I'll try to figure still, that out. I'm yeah. Just curious. Okay. But yes, I, yeah. I think it's usually 20, 30 years before people can get mm-hmm. out of prison, which just. Bleh. It is. It's a life sentence. It's, mm-hmm. Yep. It's awful. <sighs> okay. I tell you, yeah. I'm going to my dark place with my yeah, biggest dude, fear. I'm sorry. It's just mm-hmm. gonna get. Yeah. It's just awful. So authorities had quickly zeroed in on Anthony, despite any clear evidence against him. And mm-hmm. once they had their guy, they stopped looking anywhere else. Oh, of course they did. A long list of potential suspects with connections to Mary Ann were never investigated. And they were also not disclosed to the defense leading up to trial. Oh, my God. They would later learn that Marianne had a violent ex-boyfriend, and one of her former tenants had shown up at her door with a gun. I mean, it's just like Daisy's case. It's just like, oh, my God, how do we get there? Ugh. And a part of me would, like, prefer that they not look at anybody versus just, like, finding some rando guy and then just putting everything in that direction you know right yeah like, just be lazy if that's your th- approach then just be lazy you well know? these guys were both they were lazy and then also very aggressive corrupt and, yeah yeah it just ugh. it must have been like the prosecutor the did all the police force like everybody was just mm-hmm. making a bunch of money somehow doing this mm-hmm. ugh. Yep. i hate i hate yep. it well, and, you know, like, it's also one of those where a white woman is in a predominantly brown neighborhood mm-hmm. and gets brutally murdered, and they have to wrap it up very quickly to keep the white people from panicking, yeah. right? Totally. Yeah. Totally. So during the summer of 1984, when Mary Ann was murdered, there was a serial rapist terrorizing the neighborhood. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's not mm-hmm. important. The man would sneak into open windows at night and attack his victims by knife point. There had been an attempted robbery across the street the night of the murder. And police initially said the crime scene looked like a, quote, robbery gone bad. Mm -hmm. They also learned that Mary Ann was known to hand out her house key to people. An exterminator who had worked on her house before had a copy and Mary Ann was also known to host young parents that she worked with and often gave them copies of her key as well. Oh, of course she did. Of course she did. 
Mary Ann and her friends were also known to throw, quote, singles night wine and cheese parties. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, yep. I need Mary Ann back so, so badly. Hard. Yep. This woman knew how to do it. Yes. She knew how to be a person. Yeah. She knew how to be a person, like the best possible yes. form of person. 100% just mm-hmm. threw herself into her life. Yep. And uh, helping others and yes. making, making life worth living. Singles night wine and cheese parties. <sighs> this was her way to hopefully meet single men, uh, for her and her friends to meet single men, which they advertised by posting in the wanted ads in the local newspaper. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, which should be fine. And probably her killer was not one of these men, but still. Still, that's a, yeah putting yourself out there like that Mm -hmm. well and letting them come into her home and right you know right now we understand with internet dating but in the 80s yeah you know why not it also came to light that soon after the murder investigators allowed mary ann's tenants to dispose of her bloodied mattress and bedspread before gathering any samples from them excuse me what yes They also neglected to gather any evidence from the bathroom or basement. Police did not check for footprints in the basement, which which was described as dirty and dusty. And despite having suspicions that the killer may have gone into the bathroom after he murdered Mary Ann, they didn't dust the doorknobs and fixtures for fingerprints. I just passed out. I'm dead. I'm done. I can't do it. Yes. I just had an aneurysm. Well, get this. It gets worse. They found, the the defense team found notes in Mary Ann's case file that mentioned standing water in the bathroom sink that contained dirt and hair on the day that she was killed. But police did not collect the water or the sink trap until two weeks after the murder. And then, according to police records, the detective called one of Mary Ann's tenants and asked him to go into her bathroom to collect the evidence. (laughs) A patrol car then came and took the evidence from the tenant. (laughs) I love this, like, telephone policing that they've got going on. They're like, hey, buddy, uh, we're going to come rest you real quick. You definitely murdered that lady. And then (laughs) we got to get that that stuff out of the sink. Like, oh, God, who could do it? No, it's Cleveland. We're a big police force. There's like 70 of us on this force. But maybe the neighbor will do it. Are you kidding me? No, uh, no. Are they walk into the bathroom the day she's murdered and are like, huh, that is full of evidence. Meh. You know, Bob can't do it. It makes him gag or whatever. Like, <sighs> we'll come what back to it. Is it's fine. Happening. What is happening? Unreal. I just can't even. Can't Not for even. one second. Anthony's lawyers learned that evidence presented at trial by prosecutors was misleading. Call me Duh. shocked. Uh huh. During testimony, the state failed to explain to the jury that while Anthony was a type A secretor, so was Mary Ann. Mm-hmm. This meant that the A type secretor fluids found in her body were just as likely to be her own, and that this, quote, evidence the prosecution relied so heavily on during the trial offered no proof Anthony was the perpetrator. Mm-hmm. One juror would later tell reporters that they spent most of the de- most of their deliberation discussing this evidence and it's what convinced most of them he was guilty yeah of course of course i would think the exact same thing give me science in the 80s yeah and it's also the only thing that they kind of had on him yeah but i mean if you're telling me that this is the like the most rare thing and one in you know a hundred thousand people or something are this person then i'm gonna yeah Mm -hmm. shut closed done Mm -hmm. totally 100 percent I would do that right now, honestly. Yes. If I had an expert scientist tell me yes. something like that, I would be like, great. I don't need to hear anything else. Right. right. It's not the know. jury's job to be the experts. That's why you've mm-hmm. got the experts, right? Mm-hmm. They also found that on the stand, the coroner testified that Mary Ann's time of death was sometime between midnight and 6 a.m., but in the police records that were finally opened in 1992, they said the murder probably happened between 10.30 p.m. and midnight when Anthony had been seen by multiple people. Uh-huh. 
They also uncovered evidence that the detective who testified about Anthony's admission of guilt had lied under oath and that the police and prosecutors hid the police file with the notes on Anthony's interrogation. Mm-hmm. They were never handed over to the defense. Once the files were shared, it showed during questioning, Anthony consistently and adamantly told investigators that, quote, he was not responsible for this crime and that he wanted to call his mom if, not when, he was arrested. Totally. This totally. stunning and extremely important so-called admission that the prosecution told the jury about never happened. And also, yeah, that, that should not be your evidence. That should not be no. your thing. No. Anthony's lawyers would also uncover that the state misleadingly told the jury that the hair found in the bag covering Mary Ann's hands could have come from someone investigating the crime scene. Once the defense was able to read the coroner's autopsy notes, which the state also withheld and refused to turn over, revealed that in fact the hair had been located, quote, under Mary Ann's bound hands, mm. meaning that if it, it hadn't fallen innocently onto her hands after her murder, but had been there beforehand. Hmm. So in 1987, a judge who reviewed Anthony's conviction found the circumstantial evidence used against him, quote, far from overwhelming. And he was troubled by the, quote, record with as many holes as this one. But in a four to three ruling, they upheld his conviction. Ah, oh, God. See? Mm-hmm. Yes. The appellate court, the prosecutor, mm-hmm. the detectives, the whole mm-hmm. state is against mm-hmm. this guy. He's yep. screwed. He's going to have yep. to wait for a whole new regime to come into power. Mm-hmm. Ugh. It turns Way out that... things is really fucked up. I know. It turns out that the author of the majority opinion, former Justice Craig Wright, later said it was the only decision in 166 death penalty cases that he came to regret. Mm. He even wrote a letter to the Ohio Parole Board in 1996 saying, quote, After long reflection, I must express my agreement with Justice Herbert R. Brown's partial dissent. Oof. There is no question that there is some, quote, residual doubt in this case. And had we had that doctrine, this case would have gone the other way. Mr. Aponovich would not have to face the death penalty. So he was saying... Um, well, it doesn't really matter. Basically, there's not there's not enough there to right, and I regret it. And that mm-hmm. sucks. That yeah. sucks. As his appeals were being denied, Anthony didn't realize that evidence believed to be missing had been found. Mm. In the '80s, during the initial investigation, the DNA samples were collected from Mary Ann's body, and then had been tested for blood. Had been blood tested, mm-hmm. and then set aside. They then went missing until 1991 when they were found in a drawer at the county coroner's office. Thank God they found them. That is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. The next year in 1992, the prosecutor's office sought to obtain a DNA sample from Anthony to test against the newly discovered slides. But on the advice of his lawyers, Anthony resisted the testing, Mm. arguing that the results would likely be inaccurate because the chain of custody had been broken. Hmm. Interesting. But in 2006, a federal judge ordered Anthony to give a DNA sample for testing. And in 2008, the results showed that the samples taken from Mary Ann's vagina did not match Anthony. But the samples taken from her mouth showed a partial match and that he was, quote, the likely source of DNA. Oh, no. What? Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Because the chain of command was completely broken and the samples were found in a random drawer, no one uh-huh. could be sure the samples hadn't been tampered with or contaminated. Uh-huh. As far as I understand, and this was, I, I think I got this part right, <laughs> but it was a little bit murky. Mm-hmm. So the sperm cells tested for DNA came up as a partial match to Anthony. Because the sample on the slide wasn't in great condition, they weren't able to get a full DNA profile from the sample. Got it. So it was a likely source, not a, mm-hmm. not a definite Conclusive. match. Right. Right. Still not good if you are already in prison. Right. It's not compelling people to get you out. Right. Um, they also found no DNA from Mary Ann on the slide, even though it supposedly came from her mouth. Mm. And they found unknown DNA from a person who was never identified. <laughs> Definitely the right sample. 100%. Right? Clean, 
good sample good right if it doesn't have the dna <laughs> of the person that it's from then it's right probably not from the person yes says science right right Generally. and the problem is that the the sample was not in great shape uh -huh. so maybe her dna just deteriorated to the point where they couldn't find it yeah um but then they're finding random third person dna yeah, like points me in the direction of either either like it's been right contaminated sample. by mm -hmm. which is bad and should be thrown out anyway right. but just in general it's not this we can't say anything use conclusively it. no right. don't use it that's no. the put it in the no don't know pile right exactly we have a sample that says no it wasn't his and a sample that is also not really probably his but no it is probably <laughs> his but it probably didn't come from her right <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, of course, prosecutors were very quick to announce that the DNA had been a match to Anthony. Right, right. Conclusive, done. 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 Yeah. We're done here. While his defense team did the opposite and said the DNA exonerated their client. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no. Very confusing. Yeah. A hearing was held in 2014 where the DNA results were officially entered into evidence. And both the prosecution and defense had medical experts testify about the DNA findings. In early 2015, the court ruled that the, quote, unconverted and unequivocal evidence, including the newly discovered DNA evidence, disputably proved that the semen that came from the victim's vagina did not come from Anthony. Wow. Be right, which is true. Yep. Yes. Because the state had accused and convicted Anthony of being the sole perpetrator of the crime, mm -hmm. the DNA evidence proved that Anthony did not rape Mary Ann, and therefore he did not murder her either. Mm -hmm. The judge then acquitted Anthony on the charge of rape and ruled he would need a new trial on the charge of murder. <laughs> good. I mean, good. Wow. Yes. But good. He then vacated Anthony's conviction and death sentence and released him from death row. Good. Prosecutors had the option to try Anthony again if they wanted to, but in the meantime, Anthony was released on bond. Wow. Good. Yes. He would spend the next two years at home with his new wife that he had met while in prison mm. and his adopted grandchildren who were still young. Mm. He told reporters that he never had the chance to raise his own kids, so he was trying to make up for lost time. Mm -hmm. His granddaughter talked about morning sitting on the porch with her grandpa having, quote, coffee time. <laughs> she said they would sit outside with the dogs and just laugh. Everyone in Anthony's family was happy to have him home, but Mary Ann's family believed her killer had been let out of prison and was mm -hmm. still guilty. Once again, just further traumatizing, victimizing mm -hmm. the victims. In 2018, after being out of prison for almost two years, federal marshals stormed Anthony's mm -mm. house and arrested him once again. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yup. This happened after the Ohio State Supreme Court ruled Anthony had to go back to death row. Why? My <laughs> God. Why? Because the court relied on a hyper-technical DNA statute in the Ohio state law, which says it can only overturn sentences when the prisoner makes the request to test DNA. Uh, oh, my holy shit. Can you even believe these words coming out of my mouth right now? No, that's absurd. That makes me so unbelievably mad. This is... <laughs> We're just doing it all wrong. Courtney. I can't. I can't. I know. It's just a game. It's just a fucking game to them. Yep. Because Anthony didn't ask for the testing to be done, the results were irrelevant, even though they proved him to be innocent. Oh, my God. Like, what the fuck? No, I, there's nothing to say. I'm, gonna, I'm holding on for dear life. I know. <laughs> I can't. I know. The common police court judge who ordered Anthony back to death row, death row, Mm -mm. wrote a five-page opinion where he expressed his dismay that Anthony was sentenced to death based solely on circumstantial evidence presented during a trial that took place just 55 days after Mary Ann's murder. Mm -mm. He also noted the record of the case against Anthony was, quote, troubling. 
County Prosecutor Michael, the, the guy, the, the judge who had to order him back to death row didn't have a say. He just was writing mm-hmm. the opinion. Um, he was because of the state, the state Supreme Court. So Mm -hmm. he was like, no, hell no, I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't forced to, basically. Right. County Prosecutor Michael O'Malley said in a statement that Anthony is back where he belonged on death row. Quote, the gamemanship has gone on for far too long, O'Malley said. Putting him back on death row ends the agony of years of litigation that has tortured the victim's family. Mm. There haven't been many updates since Anthony's return to prison. <laughs> You're kidding me. No, dude, I this was hate, 2018. hate it. <laughs> no, dude. I hate it more than anything you've ever done to me. I know. I know. I'm so sorry. <sighs> he has been working with a group of Georgetown students who created a short documentary about his story and are trying to get him another trial. Mm-mm. There's a petition you can sign through the Action Network to get the governor of Ohio to free Anthony, but at this point, it seems like Anthony will remain on death row unless the state of Ohio changes this dumbass DNA statute. I'm going to make a petition for the governor of Ohio to go fuck himself. (laughs) Seriously. And the prosecutors, and the judges, and the Supreme Court, and everyone who's ever worked in law enforcement in the state of Ohio. Yes. Wow. Yep. There's no indication that the DNA found in Marianne's body has been entered into CODIS or that investigators have even thought to look into other possible suspects in her case. In 1988, one of Anthony's defense lawyers asked a common pleas court to compel the state to compare the DNA and hair found on Mary Ann to a man named Ronnie Shelton, Mm. who is known as the West Park Rapist. Yep. Shelton was indicted on more than 32 counts of rape, Six of these rapes occurred within two miles of Mary Ann's home, either just before or days after she was killed. Unbelievable. The way that Shelton attacked his victims matched what happened to Mary Ann. Quote, Shelton's victims were threatened, vaginally and orally raped, and had their clothing removed. They were beaten, choked, and surprised by Shelton late at night or early in the morning, the points of entry into the homes was either the basement or first floor windows, mm. and Shelton used a knife or other sharp objects as a weapon. Despite this clear connection to Mary Ann's murder, Anthony's defense lawyer's motion was denied. I just cannot do it. Nope. So <sighs> Anthony is now 67 years old and is still on death row. If Mary Ann was alive today, she would be 71. Mm. As is often the case, especially when wrongful conviction is suspected, the story switches away from the victim and onto the person believed to be responsible. And I would say in all cases, really, that's what happens. Oh, hell yeah. Well, because you get two victims, too. They both lost their life. It's important to remember that Marianne made a tremendous impact on those who knew and loved her, and she was deeply cherished. Marianne was stolen from this world much too soon, and nothing can bring her back. I can't... I can't. I hate it. I hate (laughs) everything about it. Everything. I know. And the fact that this isn't, you know, like, bigger news now. Yeah. I I guess we're all really distracted. Um, We've got a lot going on. But, yeah. The fact that he's put back into on death row and there's very little about it in the current news. Because it's the worst thing to talk about. It's so frustrating. It's such a like perfect example of what's wrong with everything and mm-hmm. why it doesn't work and why we've just turned it into a weird game of, mm-hmm. you know, like if you caught up in that game, you're fucked. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if you're on the wrong side of the winning team, you know, like you are so screwed. That is devastating. It's completely unacceptable. Everybody loses. Every single person loses except for some weird, like, egomaniac or something, yeah, you know? I don't know who, yeah. Somebody's like, oh, we got is. another conviction point and our, I'll put it on the tally board. That mm-hmm. felt pretty cool. Like, what, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, what does that achieve? What are you doing? Oh, God. Yeah, we're just treating each other like garbage. Like Brains. We need to get the brains together. I don't understand it. I cannot begin to understand it. Like, I can understand some things. Like, I can understand people who want to 
keep guns. Like that makes sense to me. That's fear. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But people who just like prey on other people in this sort of weird system we have set up, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. That is very fucking chilling and disturbing and unacceptable. Yes. Yuck. Yeah. And just watching like our Supreme Court right now doing the shit they're doing. Oh, yeah. We are just this very fine line between well i guess the veil is just lifted it's always been this way but we're just seeing oh it yeah now, it's ripped right, right on like, back well yeah, so you it's... know it's kind of good i think in a way i mean it's horrible but it's also good we need to know mm-hmm. we need to know that it's a game we need to know that none of it matters trump taught us all that nothing matters that it's mm-hmm. all fake it's all make-believe so let's treated as such honestly Mm -hmm. you know i mean it's like catastrophic implications for the status quo in the current society but that's only serving a very small portion of people very small at this Mm -hmm. point so good riddance good riddance fucking that (laughs) (laughs) you know bye bye Bye. go it's not good Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm sick of your shit God, God, I'm so sorry for her. I'm so sorry for her family. I'm so sorry for him and his family and everybody. Everybody. Everybody but the tally board loses. Good for you, tally board. I hope you felt really good to get that one little thing. Yeah, hopefully you got a promotion out of it, you fucking fuck face. (laughs) You know he did. Two severance, two, what's it called, retirement packages. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Well, everybody signed the petition. Do yeah, I, I, and maybe I'll keep looking. Maybe there's more out there that I missed, but I just couldn't find. Yeah, like, tell your who's, friends. Yeah, who's fighting for him? What what can we do to help? Um, because it's crazy. It's terrible. Yeah. So see you next all time. Right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> you guys rule. <laughs>